person that's set up for that. Oh yeah, so yeah, you just do this. Okay. Oh, so. Okay. Bam. Right. so it's gonna be a little rough for a second. All right. But uh how's everybody doing? Alright, we on. Can you see me alright? Yep. Ha I don't know why. I mean after twenty eight episodes and countless other feeds, I am always a nervous wreck. Um before I go on. And uh, anyway, uh, I don't know if Mike Santola is on here, but it's Mike Santola's birthday. Mike Santola lives in New Orleans. He's a friend of mine. He was one of my very first customers. He was probably customer between five and ten. So, uh, and we became friends, and um, you know, and uh, I hope we're always friends. Happy birthday, Mike! Happy Santola. birthday, Mike! Hi, everybody. So, um, I have Pat. That's why I got my earpiece in. It's not because I think I look cool this way. Uh, but I have Pat in my ear. He's, he's going to help with questions. And uh, he said, hey. <laughs> so, um, uh, Pat, uh, there was a guy in the group that is selling his house, and somebody um, wants his smoker. Do you know who that is? I, can't, I didn't write his name down. But I wanted, to, I wanted to comment on that because I just sold my house last August and um, uh, that actually crossed my mind to have that thrown in the deal right because I had a kick-ass um, stump smoker so like my opinion on this was uh, one are you getting your asking price uh, two is the market um, really good in your area and how bad do you need to sell or want to sell you know what I mean so I know there's a lot of people in there that's kind of, you know, asking logical questions like that. And then there's other people who are like, no way, I would not give up my smoker for anything, right? You can always buy a new smoker, right? But this smoker, uh, I don't know what it costs, but I would venture five to six grand. It's a nice smoker. So um, uh, those would be the questions I would want answered before I could even... Um, Look, somebody's calling the Girl Beast hotline right now. Isn't that crazy? Uh, I can't answer. I, bet, I guess I could answer on the air. No, don't that would answer be weird. Um, Yeah, okay. Sorry about that. So anyway, um, we are doing... So, Kathy said it's hard for her to hear. Is anybody else having a hard time hearing? Is anybody they... else having a hard time hearing? Do I need to just speak up? She said get closer, but he can't. There's no way to get closer. Well, you closer. can move that a little bit closer. I can maybe. do that. How about now? I actually have a piece I can put on. Oh there. yeah, get that piece. How about that? So thing? first, let's know. Can you hear me okay now? All right, Kathy, can you hear okay now? Or does let's anybody see. else have a hard time hearing me? Time. Is it Kathy or is it me? I'm okay if it's me. I'll fix it. I just want to make sure everybody can hear. By the way, it is uh, just stupid humid here in Louisiana today. Yeah. I am sweating. Like running down my legs. So, can okay. everybody hear? Um, sounds fine. Sounds fine. Sounds good. Uh, somebody said probably just speak up. Um, all right, yeah, I'll try to speak up. Or I won't try, I will do. <laughs> Everybody, sound seems to be good. Okay, all right, cool. So, we're doing something today that we have not done yet. I don't know why, because we love fish and we love redfish. So, we're doing redfish, and this is fresh. Right? Yep. Yeah, it is fresh. Um, obviously, it's not frozen. But it's fresh, like literally, it was in the ocean um, a couple days ago. All right. <laughs> so that's how fresh it is. So, uh, what we're doing, we're doing redfish. And then we're doing a crab meat sauce. So, I don't know if you know this, um, but when you mess with crab meat uh, and you get it in your tub or whatever, uh, the people picking it don't get all the shells out. And um, really, it's, it's, it's kind of a pain in the butt, right? But there's a couple little tricks to help you find the shells. One of them is to spread it all out on a cookie sheet and let it dry, okay? Um, and another to speed that process up is to put your oven on like 250-ish and put it in there for like 15 minutes. Like the crab meat's already cooked. It's not going to dry it out. 
okay, it will start to dry the shells out. Um, and that's really the easiest way to do it. And you're still gonna have to feel around, right? Like when I was spreading it out, um, I found a bunch of shells. See, look, I don't know what you can see, but look, the shells turn yellow. Okay, and then you just pick them out and throw them away. I found a shell when I grabbed a handful of it to eat, and just it, as a taste test. <laughs> I love crab meat. So good. We need some old base seasoning though. Nope, not for this. Uh, no, but all right, so we only Next need a half a pound of crab meat for this. Um, so this is going to be a half a pound of crab meat, two sticks of unsalted butter. I got the Irish, actually this stuff is milk. This was hard when I brought it out here 10 minutes ago and it's almost soft now. Um, uh, two tablespoons of minced garlic, a half a cup of white wine. Uh, what am I, oh, hot sauce. We have Texas beet for the hot sauce. We got some green onion. We're only gonna use the tops and it's getting wilted out here in the heat, but there's, uh, there's some good ones. Um, and that's, oh, and some whipping cream. Where's it at? Oh, we got whipping cream sitting in the ice. Oh, you got the green onions? I got the green onions. Uh, we're also doing some grilled asparagus. So I have the asparagus, and I, I do mine very simple. All I do is I put some uh, olive oil in there, coat it really good with olive oil, salt and pepper, and uh, I let it, if I can do that well ahead of time, I do. So I did this probably 30 minutes ahead of time. I find that it cooks better. Um, when you let that oil and salt and pepper absorb into the meat. Let me grab my, my gloves and we'll get this show on the road. All right. Oh, so, um, man, I feel like a broken record sometimes. But, and I've been talking about new products for a while. We actually have a new product sitting in our warehouse right now. It's still a surprise. I can't tell anybody what it is, okay? And there's a reason for that because we have content to go with the product <clears throat> that's not quite ready yet. I'm looking at Wendy when I said that. <laughs> <laughs> the one, the it's not quite ready yet. Well, yeah, because so something's going So we are it. about two weeks away from launching that, but then we have another product that's in transport right now, and we'll probably release that one before the one we need to contact. So Kenny said he had a great visit with you yesterday. Oh, hey Kenny. So Kenny lives 25 minutes away in uh, Ponchatoula, and um, we owed him a, a an injector. By the way, so he won that injector because he shared the feed. So that's what, like if you want a chance to win something, share the feed to any body or any group that allows you to share the feed. Like if they have rules, you can't share stuff. I mean, me personally, I try it, see, you know, because if they don't have a written rule, then then it's probably okay. Uh, but if it's not, then don't do it because then that's not cool. But we want to be able to share this feed to as many people as possible. We have Instagram Live right here. Instagram kind of gets the, that whole wide view. Um, and then uh, Facebook gets it like right in your face. Right, so please share the feed. So we have a contest. Uh, it's a random person who shares the feed, and then whoever shares the feed in the most places also wins. So that doesn't. So like Pat already shared it in in the VI Rural Beast VIP group. So we don't need people to share it in there. Maybe a couple doesn't hurt, right? But we want to be shared everywhere else. The people that don't know about us yet. I know I'm talking a lot. It's my nerves. So one thing, one more thing I want to say, and then I'm getting to cooking. I promise. Um, we did a live feed on Amazon, and uh, like I didn't even know they did this. And they came to us and they wanted us to do a live feed for Grill Beast, and it's kind of like a QVC home shopping work network um, mushed into Amazon, and that's something they're testing out. So uh, we, they gave us the opportunity to do that. Hopefully, they, we get another opportunity. So we were on Friday. We let a lot of people know it was a half hour spot, 5.30 to 6 central time, and um, by the end of that, the most we had on at one time was uh, 9,000 plus, that's a lot of people, and then uh, by the end of it, we had over 43,000 views, which is like crazy, 
Um, so normally for Feast with the Beast, uh, a really good one, we have about 15,000 views. Um, the most we've ever had on at one time is like 350. Um, but we always get like at least 5,000, or right about that. Almost every time, at least that, 8,000 is probably an average. So to have 43,000 views in 30 minutes, uh, to me that is I smell propane over here. So we're going to be using the propane, we're going to be using the bullseye. Um, the bullseye, I have it like about 375, 380. And let's get this going. All right, so we have some beautiful redfish. Look at this. Wow, that is nice. Kathy, you asked if redfish were the same as bee liners, and I believe bee liners are a red snapper. Is that correct? Um, and I think they're very similar. They left a bone in there? Yeah, we got some bones in here. Mm -mm. Can't be choking today. Mm. Cannot be choking today. Man, I hate that. Hey Phil. So anyway, they left some bones in here. <coughs> and I'm not the best. I didn't anticipate this. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? There we go. Well, I don't have time to do the plier thing and all that. So we're going to cook this later on. Let me see this one. Man, that's crazy. You know, ever want a chicken bone to go down your throat? <laughs> My sister had a chicken bone. Oh, you can't, oh they can't see what I'm doing. I mean, not a chicken bone, a fish bone. They can't see what I'm doing. Oh, right, gotcha. All right, so look, this had bone in it. So to make it simple, oh, um, I just cut cut the fillets down the center. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, do they have a specific question about the bullseye? Well, asking uh, Kathy asked, is the redfish the same as bee liner? Which bee liner, I believe, is um, a red snapper. So did you all hear and that? So a redfish is... You got red drum and red snapper. All right, so somebody was asking about the bullseye. And they're similar. So we've had the bullseye for a month, right? Maybe more. two months. Uh, we use it... Um, Sorry, I'm trying to get Almost this. every day. So Wendy's trying to get the... Can never get this thing off of here. It's the worst thing ever. Do it the wrong way. All right, you do it. See? Okay. Thank you. All right. <sighs> now I can show you how to food. All right. So anyway, you just get your fish right. It'd have been nice if this was all nice one piece, but uh, they left shells on it. So basically, we just want to drizzle a little bit of oil, rub it all over, right? Okay, that way we don't have to worry about anything sticking to the grill grates. Then the other side, we're going to rub some butter. And we made our own bronzing seasoning. And you'll be able to get the uh, recipe for that on the website when we post this on the website. Okay, we'll upload this video to YouTube. And Jeff Knapp wants to know this, what seasoning do you recommend? Uh, bronze and seed. Well, so it really kind of depends on your taste, right? So bronze and season is uh, brown sugar, uh, cumin, chili powder, onion powder, garlic powder, and paprika and salt. So you can mix your own bronzing seasoning. And uh, like I said, we're going to give you the measurements for all that on the uh, website. Um, or you can use just a, you know, occasion seasoning or whatever you want, really. But we want to do the bronze and seasoning today. All right. So you just coat this with some butter. The oh, butter makes jazz. everything better. <clears throat> and then, actually, let me take. 
Huh? No, no, not today. Why? Is somebody asking about it? Yeah, so I don't have it set up today to send the recipe uh, because we've changed how we do a few things. And so um, that's just a step that's not finished yet. So in case you don't know, we used to do um, to where if you wanted the recipe uh, message to you, uh, we would have you type send in and we'd message it to you in Messenger. But like I said, um, we changed like how our uh, how we process emails and messages and all that kind of stuff and uh, we have to finish setting that up. Okay, so see this? You don't need a ton. And it kind of looks like I'm putting a ton on there. You want it liberally. But Season. not a ton. Not a ton, just because I like to taste the fish. So, like a lot of this, like the sugar is all going to break down and caramelize and all that kind of stuff. Right. It's not going to make your fish sweet. You don't like sweet fish. All right, that's it. That's all you do to the fish. All right. So we're going to get this on. This is going to take about 20 minutes. So while this is doing, we're going to actually throw an asparagus on there uh, because at this temperature. Yeah, what's your temperature? I got it at like 375. Alright. No, that's not an exact science. Oh, Starkey said, where's the beef shaker? You should come out with a beef shaker. I should. Really? There are like no handy. shortage of ideas. Nope. You got some sizzle. This might not even take 20 minutes. Some asparagus on. So one of the cool things about the uh, the bullseye that I think is, um, especially when you add the grill beef grill grate, you can sear with it. You can cook just like on a grill, but it's also indirect cooking at the same time, right? Um, to me, it's just kind of easier. All right, so that is wrapped up out the way. Let me change my gloves. That fish all over them. Do we have any questions in here, Pat? Starkey said, wrap that asparagus and bacon. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Chaz said, good morning, Pat. LOL, you're like the silent partner. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, you, he my speaks, but you don't like, hear him. My hands are sweating, so these things are hard. And grilled asparagus goes great with fish. So, huh? No, um, Chris Dunbar said grilled asparagus is probably his favorite vegetable. I was just saying it's a nice side for fish and steak. But so actually, I'm going to show you a little trick that um, somebody actually just showed me. <laughs> The trick is not how to get the glove on easily. Right. Dave Morin said, who do you recommend for custom grill grates? Oh, I recommend Grill Beast. <laughs> <laughs> so Dave Morin, so we love Dave Morin. Dave Morin, um, I met him, actually I met him through his brother, right? His brother Mike. Um, and uh, because I was in the barbecue, and uh, Dave Morin, Mike's brother, was in a barbecue. Mike hooked us up. And Dave um, has a Facebook group called... Um, um, Thank you, Mark Ford. What's it called? <laughs> Who does? Boss's Barbecue uh, yes. Club. Sorry, man. So, uh, and actually, dude, um, you don't find any spam and all that in there either. It's a cool group. So, uh, and that's, that was actually probably the first barbecue group I ever joined. Um, and Dave, he's an awesome dude, and uh, so go join his group. And if you're not into Grill Beast VIP, join that group too. And remember, if you want a chance to win something, um, share the feed. Look, I'm going to check this real quick one last time just to see if I see any shells. Feel any shells. 
It's easier to do it if you bare, bare hands than with gloves on. But um, we. Good morning, Todd Kern. I think we're good. Good morning, Jared. All right, Todd Kern's on. So, not to just keep running my mouth, but Todd Kern hooked us up with these crazy, crazy good. Um, Brady Boys pretzels. Brady Boys pretzels. If you get them, they're addicting. I so, wake up eating them. I'm not kidding. <laughs> not kidding. When I'm they're like pretzels with, you want to hide from the kids. Right. Right. That, right so it's not jumbo this. lump, Karen. It's just uh, lump. All right, let me get this going. I had this fired up a minute ago, but um, ah. Ha ha, you turned off the propane. No, I ran out of propane. Ah. Hold on. This is the beauty of doing live feeds. All right. Ah, oh, Kathy, that sounds awesome. Kathy said she's grilling Italian marinated chicken pen, penna with grilled mushroom sauce. Penne, I guess, with grilled mushroom sauce and grilled Brussels sprouts today. That sounds good. Yeah. That sounds like my kind of food. All right, let's try this again. As long as I'm Woo -hoo. All right, so first, we are going to melt two sticks of butter. And I didn't burn my fingers. Oh. Nice. Nice. All right, so we got two sticks of butter here. You need a uh, torch it's, lighter. It's uns. Gary Golden said. <laughs> yeah, I know. I keep forgetting to get one. So, um, I mean, I got the Irish only because it can't, and I don't, I, I hardly ever use unsalted butter. But, so we had salted butter we used on the fish and unsalted on the sauce. Chris Dunbar said we need a grill, a grill beast stick lighter. <laughs> like I said, there's no shortage <laughs> of, right? uh, of uh, everything we use, we should make it. Alright, so we need to let this melt. And then we have, let me cut these lemons up real quick. It'll take one second. See how sharp these knives are? So I've been noticing in the group, people have been getting that, was it Bavarian, no, I'm saying it's wrong. Bavarian knife sharpener. I tell you what, I grab, I was at Walmart last night, and I, no, night before last, and I saw it sitting right next to the counter. Load that butter, Woo! load it far. They are, You're gonna burn good. the butter up. Good. Okay. Burn it. All right, so. There you go. Um, let me just get everything ready. Where's my measuring spoon? So, tablespoons, tablespoons. Get everything over here. Turn that down a little bit more. Got a whipping cream. Like, like the, the recipe we give you for the bronzing, um, I mean, there's like plenty, right? You could actually save this. So, you can store anything like for six months in a, in a tightly sealed container. Yeah, 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 yeah. Room temperature. The temperature of the the temperature of the grill when you're doing the fish, um, I had it at 375 before I opened it. Right now it's at 300. It hasn't climbed. So it's climbing back up. So Chad Keller says that the Grill Beast stick lighter should have a 10 foot flame to uphold the Grill Beast reputation for having kick ass products. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, I forgot to take the tape off. I know. I was going to do that. So, like, when we time. did our live feed on Amazon, um, we can't promote. You know, we're there to promote Amazon and us being on Amazon. We're not trying to take customers off of Amazon and bringing them onto our website. We're trying to bring customers to us through Amazon, right? 
So we covered up our URLs on everything. Hence the black and I tape. forgot to take the black tape off for the show. Or I remembered, I just didn't have time. Yeah, that's kind of what happened. Because <laughs> every week we are last minute. Okay, we, I'm just letting this melt down just a little bit more. Turn the heat down, maybe a little bit too much. There you go. So anyway, we want this to be cooking at, let me turn it up just a little bit, at like 350-ish, 375-ish, something like that, but 300 is fine too. Uh, I should probably open it up even more because I need to check the asparagus in a minute. All right, so right now, I'm gonna start throwing in, see the butter, it's nice and melted, okay? I'm gonna start throwing in some of our other stuff. So you got two tablespoons of minced garlic. You got two lemons. Now, I didn't give you a measurement size, they just said two lemons. It seems like a lot of lemon juice to me. Huh? I can't be on the internet. What? Oh. So, there you go. Two lemons. So, everybody's kind of requesting a cutting board with the um, Robies logo burned into it. We are getting to it. <laughs> it, it is, truly, it is. Um, it is a ton of work uh, to get a product out. It's like the ones that are like ready to launch right now, the one that just got to the warehouse and the one that's in transportation, um, I actually wanted them months ago. But it took just, because you have problems, like pack packaging problems or um, you, get a, you get a sample from the factory and it's not uh, what you want, so they have to redo the mold for it. There's just so many things involved. We have one product that's sitting there, um, I had to go ahead and pay for it, but the packaging is messed up. So we have to redo, it's the third time we're redoing the packaging. So you just have things like that that just happen, and it slows down getting things out. So um, a cutting board is something that I really do want. Okay, hold on. I'm losing my spot here. Uh, a half a teaspoon of hot sauce. All right, and uh, one of my favorite hot, spa hot sauces is Texas Pete. I don't know if y'all have... said grilled beef lemon squeeze it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, that would be easy to put a logo on. So I'll tell you what. So I was at Kenny's house yesterday, and I was tasting some of his. I think it was his nephew. Hot sauce. Dude, that hot sauce was hot really hot and I, um, I I had two like dabs on my finger and I was like I'm done so anyway that was like really 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 like you hot put sauce. a drop in a whole pot of gumbo and there you go asparagus is done that was quick yeah, it's done a little fast. Well, oh, yeah. perfect. How's the fish? Yeah, asparagus is perfect. It's still crisp, but it's done. And the fish. sauce is almost done. So we need to throw a half a cup of wet, uh, white wine in it. This white wine was donated <laughs> by Vasilvic? I don't know. But anyway, these people are, it's actually a winery right here in Louisiana. And what they did, and I don't, I, I don't want to get it wrong, but they brought their wine, their grapevines, from another country, 
and I should know this, but I don't. Uh, oh, Bosnia. And uh, they started growing them here so they can bring their wine business to America. So right. I gotta tell you something funny Eugene Jackson Bray III just said, because I agree with him. He said, in my opinion, Texas Pete is not a hot sauce, it is a warm flavoring. Ah, yeah, that's actually that's, right. Right, right. It has a great flavor. And that's why I like it. It's not, it's not overpowering with heat, um, but it adds flavor. Yeah. That's actually exactly why I like Texas Pete. So then you also do two teaspoons of the bronzing, okay? So, so you're using this bronzing in, in two, uh, oh, that's a tablespoon. Almost messed up. Hold up, where's my teaspoon? Hold up. This oh, needs to be cinnamon. So two teaspoons. I just mixed it with one cinnamon. Two teaspoons of that. Alright. Alright, let me turn this up just a little bit. Alright, so we're gonna let this get this to a simmer. Let it simmer for like two minutes. Let me check on my uh my fishies. Should have a fork out here. Delicious. They do look delicious. Uh, I think that fish is gone. What about the other? All of them just. So the bronzing seasoning has brown sugar, chili powder, ground cumin, um, paprika salt, onion powder something else. Charles, what we added was a little bit of the bronze and seasoning to the, um, the melted butter and lemon. I'm turn this bad boy down. I'm going to turn that right off. Let me mix up this, this here. This is all going to be done right about the same time. It's all beautiful. Alright, so let me take... I don't know what I'm going to do. Simmer. Wipe this off. So I'm just wiping the board up and I'm flipping this over so I can put the. Uh, oh, the uh, butter's boiling, boiling. You gotta turn it down. These are actually beautiful. Aren't they? Mm -hmm. Let's put that there. That there. Uh oh. Almost messed it up. All right. Check the bottom. We are getting near the end already. Okay. So this was boiling. So now what we want to do is add in whipping cream. Whip it. Whip it good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So anyway, not a heavy whipping cream, although. I don't know that it matters. I don't know that much about whipping cream. So you want to mix this in, keep it mixing while you're putting it in, because you're putting it in a hot, li hot liquid. Okay. Ooh, that's getting nice and creamy. There you go. This is gonna be delicious. All right, let me put this back on the heat. The heat is on, again. All right, now, we need to, uh, the flies are like coming after right, the food. Right, that's the worst thing about the summertime. Summertime. Yeah, it's so humid. All right, so. Let's 
So you only want the tops, right? But like some of these tops are lame. We want some good tops, right? So hold on. Get rid of those. Why don't we do this? Real quick light. Whenever you have gloves on, uh, it's happened to me a number of times. Be careful because you will get plastic glove in your food because you'll shave your, your protective layer. We need more and more and more and more and more. Never have enough green onion for them concerned. Yep. So I didn't have time to do this ahead of time. I don't know if that's enough. Here, hold up. Can we mix this? Oh, this is going to be good. Mmm, I smell it already. Yeah, it smells really good. It doesn't good. even have to crab with a green onion. Yeah, right. It doesn't have to crab with a green onion. Oh, wow. That's going to be good. Well, let me cut up a little bit more green onion. Mm. And, um, then we're ready. Alright. Let me cut this bit up right here. All right. Get those fish bones out of the way. Maybe the flies will go towards them. No. They're going through my cooking. Cool. See, they, they, oh yeah. So again, if you want a chance to win, we didn't set up our samples. If you want a chance to win, um, Groby's products, uh, share the feed. We do a random winner, uh, everybody who shares the feed. And then we do a winner on who shares it to the most places. So you can't share it like 20 times to one place. It's to the most places. Like the most friends places. We need to be able to track it, right? All right, so look, I'm not even measuring this. I think it's supposed to be like four teaspoons. I think. Tablespoon. A lot. There you go. But this is enough, I think. Yeah. Okay, okay. Alright. There you go. We'll give that like a minute. So, um, Karen said chives would be good, and Jennifer upped that to garlic chives would be good Ooh. in there. You know, Jennifer has, uh, anybody in our group or any group that Jennifer's in? Um, Bill, we're going to go blooper free this episode. Jennifer is, uh, <laughs> Her, her food is like tremendous, All right? So anything she says, really, a lot of people in the group, I um, I listen to. Go away, flies. Yeah, that's right, Lucas. Fly puke is a delicacy in Louisiana. It in is. In the summertime. <laughs> right, so fly puke we love. Right. You don't even taste it. That's the best part. You just get the protein. Yeah, so anybody that don't know, every time a, live, a, a fly lands, it goes to the bathroom. So, <laughs> it gives you something to think about, right? And uh, you haven't gotten sick from it yet, so... Right. At least I haven't. You just, there's nothing to be done about it <laughs> in the summertime. All right, there you go. All right, so this All is going to be a sprinkle on a little bit. All right. So, it calls for a half a cup of crab meat. And actually, I can turn the heat off. Do you want a um, wooden spoon or something? Nope. So I just turned the heat off because we really don't need any more heat. So I'm just going to eye this up. And. Because this is going to be. The rest of the crab meat is going to be my snack later. <laughs> so I want to make sure we have leftovers. Because I'll take. Sprinkle some Old Bay on it. Get some saltine crackers. <laughs> it's like heaven. Look at that. Oh, it kind of seems like there could be more in there. Yep, I think you need to add more. Man. There we go. You simmer, they might thicken up too a little bit. You got to turn it No, we only need to warm the crab meat up. Yeah. And the crab meat wasn't cold, so we had already 
just being outside here in Louisiana, it's warm. So, mm, all right. That's not what's our time in looking like? Let's do a. Uh, what's our time smell like? vision. Our time we ate forty minutes, so we've got we got twenty minutes left. We, are we like might actually. It out today. Yeah. So I'm gonna get some ice for my drink. Mm -hmm. Take a bite of crab meat. And um, dude, the sweat inside those gloves is nasty. So let me get uh, a little bit of ice. I don't want to use the ice in that tray because the seafood was there. Just give me one second. You could take mine too. Ah. Hmm. I get a bowl of ice. That go. way I can hook Wendy up too. Thanks. So <laughs> is anybody else? Yes. Let's go in on this fish, y'all. We gotta wait for him to get ice. Some nice pieces of fish. Mm. All right. It's gonna look better with that crab meat sauce on it. Yeah, so um, I'm gonna plate all this stuff up, make it look pretty. Where's your glass? Right here. So we're just getting a little refresher. Is anybody else having a little uh, Sunday morning um, happiness going on. So Jennifer says next winter you should make some smoked butter. That would be amazing in this dish here that we're making. That sounds like a uh, crazy idea. Right. I've never. I don't know that I've even heard of smoked butter. I know I've never had it that I know of. No. Man, this. Oh, I know. Man, this smells so good. All right. Diane, our send um, option is not working right now, so you're going to have to go to the blog later to get. Yeah, we'll have it up later we'll on. Have it up. And um, so, which plate shall we use today? Well, I think actually. Spatulas all around. This is a Mark, green spatula, in case you didn't know. Mark Lewandowski just had a shot of Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the Mark Lewandowski. Mm -hmm. Mark uh, was probably our, Pat, was he second or third in, there in our group? Mark. Yeah. Yeah, so Mark was probably our third in men in our group. All right, so I know I'm handling this with uh Dennis Alder said it's only 845, but you talked him into a rum and coke. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm not sure how to make these look pretty. I wonder if the crab sauce would be good on top of the asparagus. I, I'm sure it would. I was thinking the same thing, actually. But then you kind of drown in the whole plate in the. <laughs> you drown the Whereas, entire plate in creamy crab sauce. If you put sauce. enough for it to run into How the asparagus instead be? of topping it, then you can dip it. Well, you know what? We should have done some uh, bread to watch your drink. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so let me move everything out the way. Trying to get the scraps out of the way, so. Uh oh, Dave Morin said he just logged in and ordered his crust, his custom beast grates. It's on now, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I tell you what, we've been uh, selling a lot of the uh, beast grates, man. All right, um, so Starkey says drizzle the sauce over the asparagus. I think so too. What do you think, Ash? Drizzle the sauce over the asparagus. Pat agrees. All right. I think taste-wise it would be good. I just don't know plating-wise, but we'll see. What does Todd Kern think? That's what I always think now when, <laughs> when I'm doing stuff. What would Todd Kern do? So first I just want to do... I don't know. 
sauce on there. I'm not used to doing sauces. How's that look? I would just do maybe the sauce on the asparagus without all the crab meat. All right, we'll try that on the sauce. Let's oven. try it first. Fish needs more crab meat. Just my, so. my humble opinion of what the other one. Yeah, and the other one. Put more crab meat on here. So, what do y'all think? A or B? A or B? Let me get a fork. I can't wait to eat this. Put more crab meat on another one. Then we we'll gotta see what they say. Um, I thought you were just talking about the asparagus. Mm. No, I'm talking about the whole way. Oh my god. So like this has crab meat. Yo, not as you much. make this bronzing seasoning. Uh, what do you think, Pat? Really a good. or B? Like a lot of meat, a lot of crab. A is this one, crab meat on both, sauce on both. B is a lot of crab meat on the on top of the crab. I mean the fish, and really no crab meat. They both look good. Let me see what it looks like in the. Yeah, they look good. Everybody's saying A. A? So that's, that's B. B. That's B. This is A. Which one, y'all? I say even if you say A, you should still have more crabbing on this <laughs> fish. Alright, All right, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to add more crab meat to this one. Just, yeah. Oh, sh crap. It's all right. All right. Mm -hmm. Can't have too much crab meat. We don't have any bread. That's the thing. We got almost as much crab um, meat as we, we do have fish. two B's and two A's. So, I'd say don't put the crab meat on the asparagus, just the sauce. That's mine. I'm a B person. Most people are saying B. All right. So, all we'll right. eat A. And this is the one I'm going to eat, and then this is the one we'll take pictures yeah. of. Yeah. All right, what time is it? It's um, almost, you got about 12 minutes left. Wow, we're going to be done in an hour. That is crazy. Well, yeah, 15 <sighs> minutes. Well, no, 12 minutes. I got it. Okay, um, again, if you have not shared the feed, please share it. We pick a random winner every show of people who share the feed. Um, how many people do we have on that? Are going to keep track? Okay, so we had 110 at one time a little bit ago, um, which is cool. So look, share the feed, and uh, again, even if you shared it already, share it again. If you shared it into a group that allows that, share it again in the group, because you have new people coming in, and then they see it, and then they come aboard, right? Um, we pick a random winner of people who share the feed, then we pick another winner of whoever shares it to the most places. And so when you do that, you get a choice of Jennifer Bates spatula. shared it to 10 pages. What? She said, yep. Uh, spatula, tongs, sauce mop, uh, beast injector, beast claws, beast dominator, beast impalers, uh, hat, t-shirt, apron, pretty much everything except a Groovy's Great because Right, or Barrel House, right? Those are the only two things. But we're about to announce a really cool thing um, where you get to win a Barrel House. Actually, we got two things. So we're gonna have, um, we have our Beast Chop Challenge. You have to have your submission in today by like, I'm gonna say today, like literally, you know, we say midnight today. But, you know, if it's 4, 3 o'clock in the morning, we don't really know any difference, right? We just want people to get in this, okay? Todd Kern won the last one. It was really an outrageous experience. Um, uh, I think, I'm pretty sure if you ask Todd, because he was challenged, he learned, and things that he didn't, he would not have learned if he didn't take the challenge, right? Whenever you challenge yourself um, and you get stressed or whatever, it's a growing moment right it's like they're not they're it's not a problem it's a puzzle right so you get these challenges and it's a puzzle to solve them and you grow from it you get better at whatever it is you're doing so that's enough of my little let's eat stuff. that fish i want to try it oh all right and then what 
<laughs> the other thing where, where you're going to be able to win a barrel, I'm not telling, and, and really I need Wendy to get some content done today for that too. Uh, we've been waiting for weeks. So everybody send, e send Wendy emails. Wendy at GrillBeast.com, they say, get the content done <laughs> so Dave can put it live. That's and, what we're waiting on, everybody. Y'all, don't start harassing me. Andy Hirschner said to tell him again how to get the recipe for this. Okay, yeah. So um, we will have this live uh, hopefully later on today. If not today, it'll be tomorrow on the website and on YouTube. But you get the actual ingredients list and all that on the website. Right, grillbeast.com right. in the blog section. And uh, we'll send out, if you are on our email list, uh, we'll send out an email that announces that it is live. Okay? So anyway, let me try this. Yeah, let me try it too. Ooh. Oh, wow. Wow. I'm start chowing down you know it all before, <laughs> before I get a bite. No, this is, um, the fish is actually perfect. And, um, mm. so the bronzing is kind of interesting. One bite was a little spicy, one bite was a little sweet. But it was good, like it goes with the fish, and the asparagus is just done perfect. All right, Chad Keller, don't start harassing. What? <laughs> Chad Keller's like, come on, Wendy, get it done. So there you go. Um, I know I'm eating like a pig. I do. I eat like a pig. He does. I lick my fingers and everything. I guess right, my Starkey, peace out. All right. We wrapped it up in an hour. And uh, this is pretty good for us. We usually run an hour and a half. If anybody has any questions, let me know now because we're about to cut out. Um, if you are not in the Grill Beast VIP group, join us. It's a great group of people. No assholes allowed. It's uh, um, just straight positivity, encouragement. And helping people become better grillers, better cooks, better whatever it is you're uh, aspiring to be in the cooking life, right? So that is it. I'm starting to ramble. And again, share the feed, and we will pick our winners and announce them on the next live or the next Feast with the Beast episode 29. Peace out. Love you. Thanks a lot. Bye, y'all.